Hello and welcome to a recap of today's open source hangout. We've been working on game development with the MindTest engine. MindTest is an open source game engine for creating voxel games similar to Minecraft. It ships with, uh, actually doesn't ship with any game. I used to. Now we have to add a game called MindTest Game or one of these other games that you can find on ContentDB. We're trying to make our own game using the MindTest engine. And to do this, we're starting out with mods. Our game, Open Learning Quest, is education oriented. We'd like to help introduce kids to STEM concepts, science, technology, engineering, and math concepts, and art and creativity through play. And believe that mind test is a really good uh, platform for doing so. One of our first mods we've created by Resende Tech is this periodic elements. And he's uh, got the initial um, mod structure created. He's defined eight periodic element blocks, hand drawing the textures, and even registered a craft if you combine a hydrogen and two oxygen blocks, you'll get a water source. So you can actually create water from the elements. It's a pretty cool idea. Uh, but we discussed a bit and it's a bit uh, challenging to you know set up the mod and we're learning everything, of course. And that took us a week or two to get to where we've got. And then we realized uh, creating these by hand is going to, you know, take many weeks, we, we believe. This is a side project. So we're not able to kind of sit down and do that in one setting, for example. You know, you have to literally paint the pixels by hand or we can find some other options. What would be the options for automatically generating those? For example, if we wanted to make a big change, like changing the background color of all, you know, blue elements to purple or something or the text color, um, we would have to go through and paint those by hand. That's, that doesn't seem very sustainable. Uh, so I've taken a first pass at automated generation of the elements. It's not perfect. It's There's some definite room for improvement. Uh, and um, it doesn't look as nice as the hand created, handcraft ones. I'll just say that. Uh, these look very simple, but just nice. Clean edges and things like that. Uh, so we'll look at the automated approach here now in my pull request. So 124 files changed. I'll take a quick spin through the code. So I introduced a Python virtual environment so we could write a Python script to generate these. I've updated some um, our readme with attribution. I used a font here, we'll see in a moment, to give us a pixel feel. Uh, it's a public domain font named My Minecraft font. So I'm just giving attribution here and some instructions for people who want to uh, contribute to this project, how to do that. And um, then specific instructions for developers working on the textures. Uh, you'll need a Python virtual environment and then you need to activate that. And this is uh, going to work on uh, Mac in Linux. The Windows is a bit different. I didn't include the Windows uh, activation instructions. I, I might do that off stream uh, after I summarize this. Uh, install the requirements. There's only one requirement. We'll look at these textures in a moment. Uh, we're using, <laughs> whoa, actually, I misspoke. Well, our top level requirement is the Python imaging library. But I think I froze the environment wrong. Uh, requirements text. Uh, it's got an incredible amount of dependencies otherwise, this Python image library. I'm surprised. Uh, this doesn't seem right, but uh, not natural language toolkit. What? PyQt? Uh, I don't know. So I'll, I'll, I'll check our requirements again. Okay, but so that's how you get your environment set up. Now here's where the uh, specific changes are. We have a CSV file. Uh, contains the element number, the full name of the element, the symbol, kind of the abbreviation, element group, and the atomic weight. So we have all this metadata. Uh, here's the first element, hydrogen, symbol is H, it's a non-metal. 
It's got an atomic weight. So all the metadata is there for all of the elements. That was one of the challenges. And we'll have to fact check this. This was uh, generated by um, Copilot, GitHub Copilot. Uh, here's the font file. It's just a binary file in there. Then here's our Python uh, script. Uh, so we're going to load a few dependencies. We're loading a file from the uh, operating system. It's a CSV file. And we're going to generate some images. So we're going to draw uh, some lines in those images and we're working with the font. Uh, our image is going to be 128 by 128. Now, the previous uh, f uh, textures here, these are, I think, 32 by 32. So that's one of the nice things about hand drawing them is we have really precise control over the pixels and we don't need a big uh, texture. I'm hoping that switching to um, this 128 is not going to be too big uh, in terms of the memory footprint, how much disk space and download bandwidth is required to download all the images. I use ping, which should be pretty um, good at compressing the images. We'll look at the images generated in a moment. And uh, we're going to make a bunch of relative um, adjustments so that all we really need to do is change the image size and everything else will scale relatively except the border. I don't know, perhaps the border should also scale now that I think of it. We have a two pixel width border. Uh, so we load the font. Um, we're going to put padding below the symbol and num uh, numbers up top. If we look at the image, the number here has some top padding, so we're going to push it down. And the symbol has bottom padding, so we're going to push it up uh, from the edges. And we've got some color definitions, so this will allow us to uh, change the look and feel of the colors to make sure that they are accessible. Um, and then we have we can quickly change the text color between black and white. The color palette here, um, these were all fairly light colors, so I used a dark text color. We'll have to find a right balance if we want to switch to white uh, foreground elements. We'll just need a little bit darker background colors. We can tweak this all later. This is a proof of concept. Uh, we're just going to generate this uh, texture. This is the kind of the function that does everything. Uh, grabs the color for the so it takes in the element number a symbol in a group it grabs the color for that particular group and it defaults to white it's going to generate a new rgb image with the width and height of the image size and it's just going to fill it with the color and then it's uh, going to kind of render that image and then we create a border by kind of drawing a rectangle over that image size I don't know how this really works, to be honest, but uh, there it is. It was generated by uh, ChatGPT. And, I mean, it's probably pretty straightforward, and we can tweak it, and it works. That's the key thing is it works correctly. The first iteration, it didn't work correctly. And then we're going to grab the font for the symbol in detail. I should probably rename these. That's the bit misnomer there. This should be the, the symbol and the number, but okay. And then we're going to draw text boxes for those and position them. See here we are, the number and symbol. This should be uh, number font probably. Yeah, just got some missing numbers there. Small, small things. Draw them both. Uh, save the image texture, it's a ping file, not bad. Uh, now this should actually happen beforehand. I, I just realized, that, oh, no, 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 we're good to go. So I define the function, then we're going to ensure our textures directory exists, which it does in the repository. And we're going to open the CSV file as a dictionary, iterate over each of the rows and create the element uh, texture, calling that function. So pretty straightforward code. Um, took a couple hours to make, but I think given that we were spending multiple hours to hand draw these, and potentially would need to revise them, changing colors or layout and things like that. Uh, I believe automation is a good uh, use of our time here. In the power, you know, with GPT, it makes it faster to write these automation scripts. Uh, then we just needed to change our Lua a little bit. Essentially, um, when we were, instead of registering each block by hand, sort of what we were doing, hydrogen block, helium block. 
Uh, now we're just going to kind of get a string split function. Lua, I guess, doesn't have string splitting uh, like Python. Um, then we're going to load the file. Uh, throw an error if it doesn't exist. Skip over the header and uh, create a local uh, table. I was thinking these dictionaries or a map, but Lua, they're tables. All right, so I'm learning Lua as well. Iterate over each of those. Grab the element data. Grab that element. And we have this and put that element into this this map this table using the element name that way we can look at it back up later so then we can close that out and free up the memory a bit and loop through each of the element in that uh, table and get the file name and register the node i gotta put some lint here new lines um, so this is just going to take uh, our mod name is periodic elements and then the element name and block so periodic elements hydrogen block um, underscore and then we have a little bit of metadata and the texture file name and that you can break it so this is it just re repeats that over and over and i'll clean this up but yeah here are the textures so you can see it just did it all they don't look bad uh and here they are in the game <laughs> sorry i should just jump straight into that showing it out oh and by the way here's our previous emotions mod we're working on that too we're not gonna be able to automate these emotions but there's not as many of those and this this art style i think is really really kind of unique and wouldn't want to wouldn't want to automate this the um you know the periodic table well it's it's more scientific so yeah i can we think we can automate it but yeah one of the problems here you can see sort of aliasing around the edges so we don't have that nice crisp pixel look we lost that uh there might be a way we could improve on this again this is the first draft uh but i think it does the job and it's not super obvious it, uh or like i don't know it doesn't look really horrible <laughs> it doesn't look great we can also change the colors so they're more vivid perhaps and the font again so it's uh the foreground elements are white or lighter on darker background the borders look okay okay but that's a, an update this is our little my little test server here apple orchard we have a little apple here so this has been another open source live code hangout if you'd like to get involved with this project you can stop by github.com slash open learning quest We've got a couple of mods on, on GitHub under this organization. And this particular mod, the Mind Test Periodic Elements, is available on GitHub. We have a few issues that are good. Uh, first issue and help wanted. And we've published our mod here to the uh, Mind Test Content DB. Okay, well, thanks for your time. I hope you're doing well and have a great day.